Hi, and welcome back to Purple Color Life. You can see I'm beside the buck stove here. It's pretty warm down here in the basement, which is great because it's cold outside. In today's video, we wanna talk about how much of our heating bill is saved thanks to this wood stove and thanks to us cutting, splitting, and stacking all that firewood you see us do here on the channel. So as you can see, we actually do heat our home with firewood. I know I watch a lot of firewood channels and some of those people who use wood boilers to heat the baseboard system in their house. Some of the people just sell firewood. We're actually not selling any firewood. We use the firewood here in the wood stove to heat our house. So as you know, firewood is a lot of work. There's the finding it in the woods, bucking it up, getting to it, hauling it, stacking it, splitting it, storing it, carrying it inside, seasoning it properly to burn in the wood stove. So yes, it's a lot of work. The good news is I love all of that. From the driving the tractor, the side-by-side, -side, running the chainsaw, running the log splitter, stacking firewood I don't really love. I'm not that good at it, but the IBC totes really help out with that. So if you're wondering all that work that we do, how much does it save us? That's a question that I often ask myself. Thankfully, I do enjoy all that finding and processing firewood, and I love a good wood fire. It's my favorite type of heat. If we didn't burn the fire at all, how much would we spend on our home heating bill? So thanks to the technology of today, I'm actually able to log on and see our electricity usage throughout time from 2018 forward at least. So I've got those facts here with me. So looking at the year 2018, it was probably a pretty typical year. We had two months where we used over 4,000 kilowatt hours, four months where we used over 3,000 kilowatt hours. Then thinking about 2019, we had zero months over 4,000 kilowatt hours, four months over 3,000 kilowatt hours. 2020, zero months over 4,000 kilowatt hours, four months over 3,000 kilowatt hours. 2021, zero months over 4,000 kilowatt hours, zero months over 3,000 kilowatt hours, and 2022, so far this year, and we're in December of 2022 right now, zero months over 4,000 kilowatt hours, one month over 3,000 kilowatt hours. The key thing there is that during the pandemic, we were all working from home, and I was able to keep this fire going pretty much 24-7. Previous years, on a normal work schedule, I leave the house at between 6 o'clock and 6.30 in the morning and don't get home until between 6 o'clock and 6.30 at night. So even if I get the fire going in the morning before I leave, which usually I don't, it's gonna burn out pretty much by the time I get home. Which means that usually during the week, a fire doesn't get started until um, probably 6.30, 7 o'clock in the winter months and then it burns throughout the night. I let it completely burn out. So there is some times that the fire is not burning on a normal work week. So if you're wondering how much does that equate to in money, so thinking about back to 2018, pretty normal year before the pandemic, we had three months where our electric bill was over $400, one month over $300, so one month between three and $400, and then five months where it was over $200. 2019, we had one $400 a month, two $300 a month, and five $200 a month. 2020, we had one $400 a month. That was the month of March, the start of the pandemic. Two $300 a month, and two $200 a month. 2021, we had one month that was over $300, and it was just barely $310. Five months that we were over $200, and 2022 so far, we've had two months where we were over $300 in electric bill spending, and eight months where we were over that $200 threshold. So just a reminder about what our house is here. Um, you have to kind of understand our situation. We have an all electric house. We're in Northwest Pennsylvania, so we do have cold winters, obviously not as cold as Minnesota, Wisconsin, or the Upper Peninsula, but pretty cold winters, we do have snow. We have electric baseboard heat since we're an all electric house. There is no natural gas or boiler system here for our home. There's no central heat and air or ductwork, so it's just electric baseboard heaters in each room. We did upgrade those thermostats for each heater to be the programmable kind so that we set shifts of 
when we want the temperature to be warmer, when we want it to be cooler on the weekends, you can set shifts differently than during the week. So what we usually do is set it to be cold during the daytime when Noah's here, warm up for when we get home after work, stay pretty warm until about bedtime and then cool down again for the evening and then the following day. Typically we have a minimum temperature on those electric baseboard heaters. So they're set for uh, no lower than 63 degrees overnight. And then we have it 68 degrees when we're home on those hours that we're you know, in the house. Uh, the rooms that we're not in, like an extra office or a, a den room, we allow those to go down to 50 degrees before that baseboard heater kicks on. So there's a little bit of background of kind of how warm we keep the house and how the electric heaters work. Our house, uh, before we put the addition on, was 1,700 square feet. It is now about 2,500 square feet because we added a 20 by 40 addition to the house. Before the addition, we could heat the entire house without turning on the baseboard heaters with just this wood stove. So the wood stove is heating the basement floor, the first floor, and part of the second floor. And that's all just natural heat rising from heating these floors, going up the stairway. We leave that basement door open in the wintertime so that heat can get up into the hallways, and that used to heat the house entirely. Once we put the addition on, it was too much, not necessarily too much square footage, but the arrangement of the addition didn't allow for the airflow to get from this house in the existing fo footprint to the next section of house, which is a footprint kind of beside us over this basement wall. Okay, so now you've heard about how much kilowatt hours we use burning the wood stove. The difference between when we burned it a lot during the pandemic versus before the pandemic when it didn't really burn from you know, overnight through the next night when I got home after work. So what does all this data tell us? Well, I'm able to kind of look at the years before the pandemic, the years of the pandemic, and kind of derive from that information how much we save by burning the stove more. So from March of 2020 through 2021, uh, that's the best sample of possible winter savings because we were able to burn the stove the most. It was during the pandemic. We were home and burning daily 24-7. Burning more of the fire saved a lot of electricity, approximately $1,500 that winter. So we saved about $1,500 that winter. But when you think about it, when we were home all that time, we actually would have used more electricity because instead of letting the thermostats cool down during the daytime and let the house be cooler, since we were here, we would have actually been heating the home all that time. So my guess is we're probably somewhere in that $1,500 to $2,000 range that we saved in one year burning the wood stove a whole bunch during the pandemic. So then I wonder if we didn't have the wood stove at all, we've since I built the house, we've always used the wood stove kind of as our primary winter heat. I would call our baseboard heaters our supplemental heat and our wood stove the primary heat. So just kind of doing some rough calculations on uh, kilowatt hour usage if we weren't heating at all with the wood stove. I believe my estimation best on my best guess and the usage of electricity uh, difference between burning a lot during the pandemic and burning less on normal years, I believe we would spend two to three thousand dollars more each year on electricity to heat the house if we didn't use firewood. So some people are probably saying, well, you're doing a lot of work then for two to three thousand dollars worth of savings. And you're right, it is a lot of work, but that two to three thousand dollars is several hundred dollars a month, but that's several hundred dollars a month that we certainly appreciate by burning the firewood here in the buck stove to help heat the house so that we're not spending that extra each month on electricity. So hopefully this video helped you out. If you were wondering how much does burning firewood or a, a wood stove like this help heat your house and help decrease your utility usage? Now obviously it's gonna depend on how cold the area is, how much wood you're burning, if that wood's free to you, and we say free in quotation marks here, we know that firewood isn't free, and if you're using electricity versus other utilities. There are some years where people who use natural gas will say, you know, their gas bill in the winter months might be five or $600. There's some people that use uh, home heating oils that spend thousands of dollars in the wintertime on those home heating oils. So this is just one way to help heat your house to not have to spend as much on those type of utility costs. Thanks for watching. If this video informed or entertained you at all, we'd appreciate if you'd give us a thumbs up Leave those comments down below on how much savings you think you realize thanks to burning firewood. 
or how much you're spending on utilities that maybe you could cut back if you burned a little bit more firewood to help heat your house. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again the next time here on Purple Collar Life.